What killed your feelings for someone you were once madly in love with? I'll go first. They are the reason I asked God to take my baby back. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Omomi aka Petit Diva and in this video we are sharing things that our partner did that made us not like them anymore. This video is inspired by a woman who came online to ask people that what killed their feelings for someone that they were once madly in love with. What killed your feelings for someone you were once madly in love with? I'll go first. They are the reason I asked God to take my baby back. Part of why I loved that person was because they gave me a sense of security. The first time we ever had a pregnancy scare, I said, no, I wouldn't keep it. We're not, we're not in a real committed relationship. We're not married and I don't want to be abandoned. So no, I wouldn't keep it. And they assured me that if something like that ever happened, they'd want the baby. They would be my partner and figuring it out. And then one day I was late and then I was very, very late. And then I was sick, nauseous, and then it was time to have a conversation. And when I tried to have that conversation, they wouldn't even look at me. They grew so quiet and just waited for me to leave. They didn't say anything. And then ignored every phone call and text message I sent them for two weeks. So I prayed every single day that the ancestors would do what I didn't have the strength to do. And on the fifth day, blood. Now, after asking the question, she shared her own experience. So she talked about the fact that she was with someone and then they had a pregnancy scare. And that person now assured her that if she eventually gets pregnant, that he was going to be there for everything, that they were not going to have issues. And when she eventually got pregnant, the person practically ghosted her. He did as if he never made any promise, never gave her any assurance. And because she already knew that she could not handle the whole pregnancy herself or taking care of a child herself, she started praying that she would have a miscarriage and she eventually did. Personally, I feel sad because of the situation that she was in, the position that she was in, where she felt she could not take care of the child and go through the whole pregnancy alone. Um, I don't know what exactly was going on at the, at, with her, but the fact that she felt that without her partner, she won't be able to do the whole thing, and she was praying that she would have a miscarriage, which she did. Um, having the miscarriage, having the partner that she thought he was a solid person just flick out on her when she was at a point that she was weak she was vulnerable and she was confused she also said that she was um sick at that point when she got pregnant it was just unfortunate that at that point in time when she needed the assurance that the partner gave her before he was nowhere to be found she was at the point where she was sick she was weak and she was not mentally prepared for her to be alone in that situation and um, the only thing that she could think of was um, for the baby to leave. And um, eventually she had a miscarriage. It probably was the stress and everything that caused her to have a miscarriage, maybe. Um, but it's just so unfortunate that she was in that situation. But when I think about it, maybe that situation prevented a bigger disaster from occurring because I don't know, with that her partner, um, it could have done something worse later on in the future. And um, I don't know, maybe that was a way for her to see him for who he is and um, for her to get out of the relationship. Any which way, people shared their own story and some of them were very crazy. What killed your feelings for someone you were once madly in love with? renovating a house with my fiance. I remember the specific moment that I realized it was over. The entire renovation, I had to take the lead on everything. I just wanted to pick like the tiles and the colors, but no, I had to find the contract. I had to schedule everything. Even the things that I signed to him, I'd have to nag him. We called him, have you scheduled that? It was exhausting. He had no get up and go, no ability to manage his own time. He needed me to mother him, do this, do that. But the real moment was when we needed a sign off to knock down a wall and he was assigned that. I got the contractor to knock down the wall, but he needed to get the sign off from the structural engineer saying that it was not a low bearing wall so i kept nagging him did you do that no two days later did you do that no two days later did you do that yeah i got the sign off great i scheduled the contractor to take down the wall it wasn't load bearing the contractor took down the wall he calls me 
The roof is caving in. How was that possible? My fiance lied. He lied about having the sign off. There was no meeting with any structural engineer. He just didn't want to do it. So he lied. It was at that moment that I realized this is not a man. This is a child. I do not want this to be the rest of my life. Peace out. They shattered the image of who I thought they were. And if you're new here, I'm a narcissist. I actually have narcissistic personality disorder. So a lot of narcissistic people, when they are love bombing you, they create this perfect image of you in their heads. They think they were actually in love with you, just like I thought I was in love with one of my exes. I created this perfect image of her, just like the perfect person for me. I felt like I had found my soulmate. Here comes the love bombing process and things like that. It was super hot and heavy for a few months. It's, everything is moving super fast, just like just like typical narcissistic types of relationships do. One day she just opened her mouth and I looked at her differently from that point forward. Almost instantly, I didn't care about it anymore. I was just like, why am I with you? I started questioning my love for this person. I started to resent this person because they did not live up to this image I had of them in my head. A lot of narcissists and toxic people build this false image of you that you can never ever live up to. Once this image is shattered, they will stop love bombing you, they will start to devalue you, and they will treat you like a stranger. It's like turning off a light switch in a relationship. This stitch is personal, y'all. And please watch the original video. Her energy is amazing. And my story is somewhat similar. So I was in a almost, let's say three and a half year long relationship. This is with my youngest child's father. So in the beginning of the relationship, it was great. He was my best friend. He was my companion. It was, it was awesome. And then things changed. He began to cheat. He was emotionally unavailable. And he really just didn't act like he loved me or liked me anymore, but wouldn't let me go. Mind you, we were living in the same house. So I became pregnant with our second child. And this was while I was kind of trying to figure out whether I was going to stay or whether I was going to go. But I loved him. I ain't even going to lie to you. Nonetheless, we were going through some tough times, but I found out I was pregnant. And when I told him, he literally told me, if you keep this baby, I'm going to leave you. He would not speak to me. He would not look at me. If we slipped up in the moment and shared a laugh together, he would immediately pull back as if he regretted engaging with me. And more so because I couldn't make the decision at the time of maintaining the pregnancy or giving um, the baby back to God. And I was young at the time, so it was very hard for me to make those types of decisions. I was already a mother of two and I was in the process of getting my life together. But his behavior and how he treated me hurt me so bad. I probably knew I was pregnant for six days. On day six, I remember feeling awful cramps in my stomach. I went to the bathroom and there was blood. And I remember crying so much and calling out his name to come upstairs. And by the time he got upstairs and I told him what was going on, he literally looked at me and said, why the fuck did you call me up here? So I cried and cried and cried and a friend of mine came over and helped me um, pass through that miscarriage. After that, I could not look at him anymore the same. I didn't want him to touch me. I completely fell out of love and we were never the same. The relationship probably ended about a month and a half later for good. But I'm so glad that the divine made the choice for me instead of me having to make that decision for myself. And I know that my child will return to me um, at a later date. And I can't wait to kiss his little nose. But it broke my heart at the time, for sure. Okay, so a lot of you guys know my story. A lot of you guys don't. Um, last year, I was on top of the world. I felt like I had everything going for myself. I had a really good steady job. I, had a, I was going to graduate with my bachelor's degree. I had a very good, strong support system with my family and my friends. I was, you know, doing more TikToks, photo shoots. I was just, you know, being happy. Um, so the only person, like the only thing that I felt like I needed was a partner to share, you know, everything with and to grow with. Um, and I met this guy and he was really, I really liked him. And he was goofy. He seemed genuine. He seemed, you know, on my level. He was very, you know, attentive at first and everything was going great. Well, I, he made it official. And then, um, the day that killed me was my mom had passed away and i posted on instagram i posted everywhere that hey you guys i need your prayers my mom just passed away i really need you guys like you know i even posted like hey mom like i know you're not suffering anymore like i i love you and i'll miss you and fuck and um that same day you would expect your partner to be there for you to you know just and we were already in a relationship by then you expect them to be with you to love you to just really support you in that time of need and 
a week prior, I found out that he was with his baby mama. I didn't find out, but he was with his baby mama a week prior and she had taken pictures and she didn't send me those pictures yet. I didn't find out until the day that my mom passed away. So she decided, she knew, she watched my story. She knew what I was going through that day. And she decided to send me those pictures of her and my now ex together. And that even broke me more. Um, I told him what happened, like, what the hell, like, what the heck? And he was just like, instead of, you know, being like, hey, you're right, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Or, you know, still comforting me, like, it's a really hard day for you and I'm still here for you. No, he said, believe what you want and drove off. So not only was I crying and mourning my mom, I was begging a man to comfort me and give me the love that I needed in order to be okay. And that's the sucky part. So that should have like told me like, no, this man is not worth it. And you're gonna waste so much time with this man a year. You're gonna lose so much with this man. And I did. And uh, that's the sucky part, but I know I'm picking myself up. I am getting myself together and that's the beautiful part of it. It's life, it keeps going and I'm gonna make my mom proud and yeah. So be careful who you date and who you share your life with. Shit sucks. I'll go first. I was dating this guy. Um, he was a truck driver and he knew I didn't like truck drivers. So what happened was he came home from off of the road. He had just bought a new house. I had the keys. I had the garage door opener. I knew the code to the alarm. I had full run of the house. He came home. He would leave his phone out. Baby, answer the phone if it rings. All kind of stuff. And then one day, he came home from off the road and I was at his place. And he was mowing the grass in the yard. And he asked me to wash his clothes that he brought in. So there were a pair of sweatpants that he had on the night before and they were on the side of the bed. And so when I picked those pants up, a phone fell out and I didn't think anything of it because I totally trusted this guy because he was so transparent and I had full run of everything. And so I picked the phone up and threw it on the bed. And before I could get down the hallway good, I realized, wait a minute, that's not his phone. So I hear the lawnmower cut off and... I have the phone in my hand at this point and I throw the phone under the bed and he comes upstairs and he's like, I got to make a run to Lowe's because someone was coming to um, mount the TV on the wall. Um, <laughs> so he left and he was gone long enough, 20 to 30 minutes for me to go through the entire phone. And because it's his throwaway phone, it doesn't have a code on it. And so by the time he left and came back, I had gone through the entire phone. And so when he came back, of course, he had this person whom he said was his cousin with him to go ahead and put the thing up. And so now I'm in his closet. It's a huge closet, a walk-in closet. I'm in his closet. I'm crying. I'm mad. I'm angry. I don't come out until the guy leaves. And then the only reason I come out is because he kind of, he had been texting me. He knew I was in the closet. He had been texting me and trying to figure out what was wrong. So when the guy left, he pushes, the, he's a big guy, about six two, six three. Anyway, he pushes the door so hard that I go flying a little bit and um, I throw the phone at him. It hits his chest, hits the floor. He looks down at the phone and he looks at me knowing that what I saw in the phone, everything that's in there, I now know what's in there. And he says, baby, I can explain. What can you explain? You know what's in the phone. And if you know what's in the phone, now you know that I know what's in the phone. And guess what, y'all? He's married now and he still tries to get back with me. And guess what? He's on TikTok. And there are, he's a nice looking guy. There are so many women sweating him. Do y'all want his name, his handle? What killed your feelings for someone you were once met? I wore a clown hat for many of my relationships in my 20s. But let me tell you what took that hat off every single time. Imagine being with a man who is studying to be a physician, and yet, when he one day receives a piece of mail from a local dealership that congratulates him on being one of 10 people in the city to have a chance to spin a will to win a car, and he thinks that he's going to go win a car. He thinks that there's only nine other people that's going to show up. I think that's extremely unattractive. You're gone. Never again. 
You ever gone to a timeshare presentation with someone because you're in your 20s and you can get a couple hundred dollars for a couple hours of your life and the person that you go there with says, you know, when you think about it, this is actually a pretty good deal. No. Imagine dating someone who gets an email from a random organization complimenting them on the wonderful successes that their imaginary business in their head has and offering to help them set up their perfect website to attract the perfect customers for the low, low price of $2,000, which is going to multiply your investment over time. And they think that's a worthwhile financial investment. I stayed through all kinds of nonsense but once i recognized that that person could ruin me financially it was a wrap had to go clown hat off thank you for setting me free what killed your feelings for someone you were once madly in love with you're in for a fucking treat so a few years ago i started talking to this guy we went to the same high school but we were never in high school at the same time he was a little bit older and he was living in seattle at the time and we like totally hit it off fell in love like just like talking texting and he decides to move back to michigan moves right in with me and my roommate and we had like a movie kind of love i was obsessed with this guy we yeah but like when we fought it was really bad and our whole relationship had like an expiration date because he was going to Greece and like he would just tell me he didn't know if he could do long distance, if it was going to work, blah, blah, blah. So when the time came for him to leave, we did try it, but it didn't work. The way this man could piss me off from across the world was insane. So we break up and I... I'm like a wreck. I can't date anyone else. He's all I think about. Like, I'm still obviously in love with him. And he comes back to America. And it took me a while, but I did reach out. And when I reached out, he was dating another girl. And we, like, ended up... Oh, my God. We, like, ended up meeting up to talk and stuff. And he's like, I'm still madly in love with you. Like, I'm going to end things with this girl so we can be together. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> okay. So we start like talking again, hanging out again. And I slowly realized that like this is an elaborate lie and he is not going to break up with this girl and they still live together and it was really messy. I was totally the other woman. And so I finally realized like this is a lie. Fuck this guy. I break things off. And then I'm in work one day. I like worked in the mall and this girl from my high school came in and I knew that they had history and they like had dated in the past and she would kind of come up in weird ways in our relationship. Like he'd be like, blah, 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 snapchatted me. And I know now it's so that if I saw it and I like asked or was suspicious, then I'd be like, oh, he already told me <laughs> what a saint. Anyway. So she comes in and she's like, have you been? How's your dating life? And I was like, huh, funny you ask. I am traumatized from this man. And she's like, oh my God, me too. And we start like sharing trauma. And I tell her that like I had just been the other woman like in this relationship. And I go, look, I don't really know if I want to know the answer to this, but if he could do this with me, he could do this to me. Did anything happen between you guys like while him and I were dating? They were dating the entire time we were dating the entire time he would pick her up in my car he would have her to my apartment from the time he moved back to the time he left for Greece he was also with this woman he was living a double life and I I will never trust a man again I will never trust a man again ever what killed your feelings for someone you were once madly in love with so one time I met this girl and she was amazing and I fell in love with her almost immediately when I met her but we knew each other for about a month and then we decided to start dating and about a week into our relationship, I asked her, I was like, hey, why don't you ever want to spend the night here? Or why don't you ever want me to go to your place and spend the night there? And she was like, I don't really want to because I talk in my sleep. And I was like, okay, I mean, that's not that bad. And she was like, yeah, but when I do talk in my sleep, I say really scary and disturbing things. And I was like, I mean, how bad could it be? So I eventually convinced her to spend the night. And she was like, okay, if I do start talking in my sleep, don't wake me up because it scares me a lot and I get really disoriented and I don't like it. So I was like, okay, I won't wake you up. She was like, if it gets to be too much for you, just go and sleep on the couch and I won't be mad. So I was like, okay. 
So that night, it was maybe 1 o'clock in the morning. She was asleep. I was still laying in bed awake. I think I was anticipating something to happen, and I was trying to figure out what she meant by all this. And I noticed the bed was moving around a little bit, so I flipped over to go check on her. And she was sat fully up and staring right at me. So I stared back at her, didn't say anything. And eventually she said something, and it was in like a lower, raspier version of her voice. And she said, I'm going to eat the skin off your bones. So I just stared at her. I didn't say anything. And eventually she laid back down. And about a minute later, while she was still laying down, she said, if you don't sleep on the couch, you'll be dead by morning. So I was like, okay, I don't, I don't know if I can be in this room anymore. So I got up and I went into the living room and I sat on the couch and I could hear her through the wall. She was like wheeze laughing and saying, come back to bed, come back. Or do you want me to come to you? Come back. And I, I didn't know what I was going to do if she like walked out into the living room. I didn't know if I was just going to leave the, the apartment completely or like try to wake her up. But we talked about it in the morning and eventually we just started talking less and less. And now we just don't talk to each other anymore. So, yeah. Follow me on this story. Now, those who are following me in 2020 saw this play out in real time. It was one of those relationships where the summer was magical and then from September until early December, I was put through hell. And by early December, I finally had enough nerve to tell him how unhappy I was. This would be the infamous conversation where he told me that he preferred to adore me without feeling like he owed me. And when I pushed on that and told him, okay, but I'm still really unhappy, I got left on red for two days. And then he tried to start up conversation like nothing had happened. Now at this point, I was fed up, but I still didn't really have a backbone. So I told him that I need to go radio silent for the rest of the year and then I will reevaluate in 2021. And some of you guys saw how rough that December was for me. Literally making TikToks, telling myself not to text him. But then on New Year's Eve, which meant it was still 2020 and not 2021, he sent me the smarmiest text ever. The whole Happy New Year, despite how things went down, I'm really glad I got to meet you. And it was honestly like watching the glass breaking. All of that anxious, hysterical love was gone. And all I could see was a man who repeatedly disrespected me, who knew how to manipulate words in order to get out of responsibility. A man who was outright sociopathic in how he treated me. A man who deliberately broke my request for radio silence, but did it so close to the deadline that he was hoping that it would play with my head. And suddenly I could see him for who he actually was. And I realized I wasn't going to have to reevaluate in 2021 after all. There is more to this story, but the long and short of it is that I blocked him on my phone and eventually blocked him on social media as well. And this is when I returned back to therapy because I realized I couldn't keep repeating this pattern. It's my time to shine. All right. So um, in the end of high school and then going into college, like I had this boyfriend and I was just so in love. We had been together for like two years. He had asked me to marry him like he had joined the military so I just knew like yeah this was for life anyways um dude gets deployed he comes back to visit and he's only there for like maybe a weekend <clears throat> when he comes home he we're like driving to my parents house he's driving and I have his phone for whatever reason and he gets a text message from some girl and she said like she called him baby and so I'm like who is this like what is this and he's oh 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 babe my contact came on my eye I need you to drive I need you to drive and I'm like um we are less than a block away from my parents house just close your eyeball and drive with one eye like a normal person will figure out the contact when we get there you're just trying to get this phone on my hand i'm not stupid anyway we end up arguing about this girl like all night and then um the next day i see another text from her and she's like calling him baby and telling them they're gonna make it through this and they'll figure it out blah 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 i'm like what is happening turns out that he supposedly got some girl pregnant because he cheated on me um with someone else that was in the military Gets her pregnant. She's supposedly having twins by him. And so I break up with him and I am heartbroken. 
He didn't like turnip greens, but wait, wait, before you say I'm tripping, it's going to make more sense. Just let me explain. So turnip greens is my go-to recipe, okay? That is my ace in the hole. I make the best turnip greens, okay? I'm from the South. I've perfected that recipe over 10 years. I have never gotten any bad feedback on my turnip greens, right? If you come over my house and I'm cooking, cooking, I'm making fried chicken and turnip greens, right? So this man comes over, I made him fried chicken and turnip greens, right? Not only did he eat the food without any complaints, the next Next day, he went on to text me and praised the food, saying, oh, the food was great, babe. I loved it, especially the turnip greens. I don't even eat turnip greens, but yours were seasoned to perfection, doing the most, right? So some time passes, and I made him a steak, some potatoes, and asparagus, and I asked him, I'm like, is the asparagus too soft? I know some people like a little bit of a crunch to theirs, but I like mine soft, and he's like, oh, it's okay. I'll just choke it down like the time you made those turnip greens. <sighs> Y'all, when I say I was heartbroken, I was heartbroken. I have never been so hurt in my life. And I have been cheated on. But I have never been so hurt in my life than when that man said that about my turnip greens. And when I tried to have a conversation with him, I explained, you know, it took a lot of time and effort to prepare that meal for you. I was respecting your faith because you don't eat pork. So I cooked it with something different and it took twice as long. It took seven hours to make those turnip greens. And he goes... I don't care if it took you 10 hours. I told you I didn't like turnip greens. After I done spent all day picking and boiling turkey necks for you? Uh-uh. And then I'm like, you know, if we're going to move on, I'm going to need an apology. I think that would make me feel better. And he was like, I'm not apologizing. How about you apologize for putting them on my plate when I told you I didn't eat greens like that? Sir, please go to hell. Like, go to hell. Like, I need you. I need you right now to get off my phone and immediately go to hell. I wish I would apologize to you for that. Like, your emotional unavailability, that's one thing. Your toxic tendencies, thinking that that's cute, that's another. Your verbal abuse, emotional abuse, the suspicion of cheating, all that is one thing. But criticizing my cooking, baby, you got to go. Absolutely not, because if it's going to be you or those turnip greens, sir, guess which one it's going to be. What killed your feelings for someone you were once madly in love with? We were in marriage counseling to decide if there was anything we could do to salvage our marriage. And we were talking and the therapist noticed that my ex-husband was getting very agitated and she stopped and she said, you seem really angry. What's, talk about it, what's bothering you? And he told her that he was angry because he didn't think it was fair that I benefited from his bachelor's degree financially that he earned. He didn't stop to think that for the nine years that it took him to get his bachelor's degree while he was working full time, that I took care of everything. I took care of the house, the cooking, the cleaning, taking care of five kids so that all he had to do was work, go to school, come home, study, with no distractions, nothing. And to the point where it was detrimental on the relationship between the kids and me because I was constantly trying to stop them from bugging him so that he could do his studying because he would get so angry. And to hear him say that it's not fair for me to financially benefit from him earning his degree just broke me and I was done. I was done trying. I was done anything if that's what he valued me at. I I could never I could never be good enough for him and I was done. Now, someone shared that her own experience was similar to the original creator. Um, she had two kids, then she got pregnant with the third, and then her then partner was just 
behaving in a particular kind of way and she started wishing that um she would have a miscarriage which she eventually did another person shared how she um saw that a partner was um stepping outside when she went to get his pants his trousers and she saw that he had another phone and when she checked it she saw some things that she was not meant to know but one way or the other she found out and when she confronted him it was a whole mess now the story that made me go this is crazy this is weird is the one that the, the guy shared about the things that his ex-girlfriend was saying when she was sleep talking now he talked about the fact that she was not sleeping over in his house and he was not sleeping over in the house and he talked to her and she was like uh, when she sleeps she says a lot of things and that it might uh, scare him and everything and he was still insisting he should have known that there was problem but he still insisted and then she slept over and she was saying some scary things like what i was watching i was like ha <laughs> she was saying some really scary things and after that night he knew that he had to leave I understand that people sleep talk my grandmother used to sleep talk sometimes but it was not this severe i wonder what she was dreaming of that she was that scary the things that she was saying was scary honestly it was scary in the night somebody is saying that to you whether the person is awake or not that was scary now personally um there was a thing i had with the guy um i think that thing that relationship i should not have entered that relationship but then like i said if you've watched some of my other videos you know that when i was younger i didn't feel pretty at all so i felt very ugly and weird and this guy was someone that i had a crush on when i was in secondary school so when this person approached me and the rest i was feeling so oh my goodness is it me why did he come and meet me and everything but i was i won't say i wouldn't say i was not happy i was happy i was like oh my goodness this person is coming to meet me ah for all the people it's coming to meet me and uh, that person was a military person and it was posted to my state now that i think about it i think that person just approached me because i was someone he knew in that state when he was posted and he felt like he could do and undo <laughs> anyway so uh, the person was posted to my state and, and we had like a situation relationship whatever it's called um and um like i said i was happy at first and then um because it was a military person it was just posted to my state for just a short period of time then now posted back to another place and um when it was posted to another place i think um we had been discussing before it was posted to another place i think we had discussed about the his last relationship last relationship and i feel i think that that relationship was a long-term one and um anyway he was like he's no more in that relationship and everything but when he was posted to another state which was i think where he was coming from and which was where the ex-girlfriend was um i don't know um we started having kind of an issue or something but i was still uh, holding on to you know <laughs> my crush coming to meet me and i was like okay i was still trying to hold on to the whole thing but it's, i noticed that when i said okay let me come and meet you and everything there was always an excuse and everything but i still said okay let me just continue but i didn't feel very good about that situation because i was like why are you saying that i cannot come and visit you because when we were in the same state um i could come to your place and you were coming to my place so now that you're in another state why are you saying i cannot come to your place i know that you cannot come because you might be on duty and everything but it's not every time you're on duty but as i said let me even go to the state i've never been to the state before but i still wanted to go but he kept on saying no and everything then there was a particular time where um because he's in the military he was in navy and um they were patrolling the sea and everything because of oil bunkering and the rest um they had an issue um one of the boats had an issue and 
one of his colleagues was on a live in the sea and he was feeling one particular kind of way because I think it was his kind of his mate. Maybe we were in the same set that graduated or something like that. Anyway, tree. I was just like, oh, like, you're feeling bad. Let me come to see you so that maybe I can help you. Pay. Maybe I can improve your mood. I don't know anything. I was just trying to just go and comfort him. And I packed a few things, even though it was on the weekend and I'm going to resume work on Monday. I was like, okay, I will come from that state directly. So I took my, I took clothes that I will wear on Monday to go to work. So I would just go straight. I would just come straight from the state. Even though that thing was just not, it was not making sense. I would have been late to work that Monday if I had gone. Anyway, I was like, okay, I will come. Um, it's not like he said yes, but I was like, I'm coming and everything. And I got to the bus park. I was like, okay, where are you liquidated so that I will not enter the wrong bus? And it was like, um, he's not around. He has been, he's on duty and he's going to be on duty for the whole weekend or something like that. And, uh, he snapped. I really like snapped. I was like, okay, what is going on here? I think it just made sense. I was like, Am I the side piece? Is there something I'm missing? And I went back home, sent a text or something. I was like, I'm done. I cannot do this anymore. I don't know what is going on. That you don't want me to come and visit you and everything. Are you with? I just told him I'm done. And that um, scenario, that thing, because I'd seen similar stuff happen to my mom, like she left our state went to where my male parent was posted and just wanted to like surprise and because she was hearing something so she went there and the man kicked her out and just made her feel like as if she's a cockroach thank god my auntie was there in that same state so she was able to go and stay with her like he literally sent her away this so some was supposed to be your spouse he sent her away and i watched she come without telling him what's that and that and um, so that memory and that stuff just made me like i cannot do this i cannot be that and um if someone is refusing for me to come and stay with them then obviously there's something wrong there must be another person and like i said that state where he was posted to was where he's supposedly ex-girlfriend was so after a bit of back and forth that was the end um so months ago maybe like last year the guy calls me on whatsapp video call and i'm like from where to where i don't think i've had anything to do with you all for more than five or seven years why are you calling me the video call first of all i don't like video call so um i sent him a message that What's up? What's going on? Why did you? I saw a missed call and everything. And then, like, he just wanted to see my face. Again. Excuse you? I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not understanding. See my face for what? Anyway, way, I just um, tried to remind him that he has the family now because I think he got married. I'm not sure, but I know he has the child. And I was like, how is your people and everything? And so it's fine. And that was the end. And have had nothing to do with that person. So that is my own story. Um, I don't know if you guys have any story to share. If you do, please leave it in the comment section. I don't know what you guys think about some of the things that were shared. Um, do some of them seem outrageous to you? Do some of them seem funny to you? I would love to hear your thoughts. So, so please leave your comment in the comment section so that we can get this discussion popping. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Now, if you like videos such as this and you are not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing by clicking on the red button that says subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell notification icon by the side so that you're notified anytime I upload videos. Now, with all that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.